Well, we're back inside again, because it's like the hottest day of the year we've ever, ever had. And in Scotland, that makes it even hotter, because we are used to it being dull and grey. And we are not built for, oh, God knows what temperatures are inside, like 30 plus degrees. I am hiding inside where it's nice and cool at the moment. So we've got a little bit further on the uh, non-ECU-based, non-programming uh, controller for any kind of diesel here, basically, whether it be Wobastos, Chinese, etc, etc. So in our previous video, our problem was that the pump was getting too hot because the pulse from the 555 timer modules was on for too long, so the, instead of the, pulse, the pump doing a pulse of fuel, it was basically shuttling the pump valve over and holding it, and basically on a dead short on the coil, and then letting go and pumping it, and it was getting very hot and very angry. A lot of you suggested changing the capacitors, etc. on the, oh, there's a spare one, on these. Change the capacitor, changes the time and value of said pulses. Andrew had a much better suggestion, and that was to use one of these chips. Wait. I've got a pack of them. Here's a pack. Uh, CD4011. It's uh, a quad, quad NAND gate uh, that we're basically using as a NOT gate. So we're basically flipping the signal that we get. So instead of having a long on and a short off, that, the, that chip flips it to make it a short off and a long, no, short on and a long off, yeah. I have done my best to solder it onto one of these uh, test boards. I'm not going to flip over and show the other side because reasons. But I might zoom in a bit. Hold on. Let me see if I can uh, do this with one hand. So there is a board and a chip and some resistors that drop the voltage down for the board. Some of the connections on the other side. I'm not going to turn it over. The other thing I was surprisingly pleased about is my little uh, MOSFET board here. So I've got my Three MOSFETs on heat sinks, on the board, and a variety of uh, resistors doing the voltage changing and dropping it down to a signal uh, that the MOSFET can use more efficiently and also to pull the MOSFET down to a um, closed position faster so it doesn't get as hot. So let's zoom out a bit more. Right, the only problem I haven't managed to solve yet is. Because this chip is flipping the input, when I turn the switch to the on position and I don't want the pump to be on, the pump, the, that chip makes the pump an on. It works fine once you set it to pulsing, but at the moment, when wait, is it on? Right, so this bulb represents the fuel pump, and this little bulb here represents the fan motor. So it's not attached to anything at the moment, so let's give the fan a positive feed. I'll put it in here. Obviously it's not turned on right now because it's off off, which there is no power to anything from the switch. So if I put the switch to what would be the cool down position, you'll notice that the pump comes on at full brightness and the cool down, uh, that pretend you're a fan motor, is spinning. Once you switch over into start, that's when that'll go dimmer, and I don't know if you can see the bulb flashing. I don't have a glow plug uh, MOSFET attached, it is a blank space here at the moment. I have not wired it in. Hold on, let me zoom in on the pretending to be a pump bulb. Where is it? There it is, with the merest hint of too much. There it is, trying its little best to pretend to be a pump. That's it doing its thing. So, nothing up on the 555 modules has changed, apart from perhaps their values. They are still the exact same modules. Basically, we're still taking all the feeds into one block and then taking that one feed, and that one feed runs into one of the inputs in the chip and then comes back out and goes to the appropriate MOSFET. So we've got an input for the pump, the fan, and the, the no, the glow plug. Yes, the glow plug. That's the one I meant. Pump, fan and glow plug, except the glow plug's not attached, because it's a fairly easy one to tune, because we just needed to output a certain voltage once. All the other ones 
had a bit of fiddling. A purchase I made that you don't have to do this, but it certainly helped me in the learning process was a picoscope. And Andrew's kind of been teaching me how to use it. Now, I was going to run like OBS Studio or something, but I don't think my old laptop's going to take too kindly. I can, using the magic of science, I can tilt my camera over a bit. Can I? Can I? So this is Picoscope. All right, let's start with the output of uh, the pump. Let me just attach one of leads to the output signal, or rather the input signal to the MOSFET of the pump. And turn it on. That's the wrong, that's the wrong signal. That's, that's all we're looking for. So there we go. That is, that is the, that would be start. And I don't think I've tuned this yet. Let's go a bit more divisiony. So start of mm, 2.4 hertz probably, probably won't be enough to start it. But if I use my twiddly screwdriver now, you'll see that the, on pulse is very, very short, which is what we want. Perhaps not that short. Uh, anyway, we need more frequency. So let's, let's see if I, how many times I can get this wrong, twiddling the wrong knob. So let's try and turn it up a bit. Am I even turning it the right way? Am I turning the right one? Confidence is not high at the moment. Oh, oh. There we go, 2.7, 2.8, there's 3 hertz. Uh, right, let's zoom in a bit on the visions and we'll change the pulse. Unless I've already got it right. So we want like a 10 millisecond pulse. So there's 0, there's 10 over there, so we've got like nearly 15. So we want a shorter pulse for our pump. Uh, wrong way, other way. Am I going the other way? Am I twiddling the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? Nope, you're twiddling the wrong one again. I'm going to do that every single time. I'm not going to get this right at any stage. There we go, right. So there's 10 milliseconds. That's a. Again, I'll have to twiddle it again once the pump's attached. But this is the sort of thing you can do by listening to your pump. If you can hear it doing a nice thwack, 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 you're probably in the right ballpark. If you can't hear it doing that, eh. You've probably done it wrong. Let's use the auto setup, which is always great. It's a great feature, this auto setup. It takes a lot of the guesswork out. Oh, look at that. Still at 3 hertz. So now I can turn the frequency back down a bit. Probably to something nearer. To... There we go. There's a the frequency changing. I, mean, I think you, you can go like crazy on this one. You can dial it right up to. Let's go more. Full power. I mean, like 5 hertz is probably is full power for these here. There we go. And keep going and make it more hertz. Uh, you don't need the scope because you can see by the twinkly light on the light bulb you're and listen to your frequency. It'll be a bit of trial and error once we get this out in the workshop, but we will be waiting until it's not 40 degrees inside. Let me just take start back down to like 2 hertz. That's probably a bit more of a realistic. Doing a bit of hertz, and then, then if you move to the next uh, position, the switch should move us up to uh, what's low. Low is a bit four. That's probably a bit too much. And what's high? High is all the way at five. Yeah, so eh, not a million miles away. And as I say, first position is the cooldown in which the pump goes on at full power because I haven't worked out how to turn it off yet. I will though, don't worry. Don't worry, that's just what we've got. So yeah, this is this is us so far. I have, we have, we, yeah, right. Um, did I say next stage is wait for outside to cool down, take this outside and then wire it into the pump, the glow plug and the fan more. And we'll see if we can get it, get the heat running again and running better this time. Uh, just a bit of a spoiler, but 
totally still working on this board as well. I've added the power supply for the uh, Adafruit. I just got a couple of uh, thermistors to add, and then that one's pretty much ready to put in as well. And we'll have a play with that at a later date. Anyway, comments, questions, suggestions, etc. Leave them all down below and I'll do my best to read and answer them. And I think that's about it for today. As always, thanks for watching.